Hello, drama lovers welcome to my young and the restless official channel I hope you're all having an amazing day. Before we dive into today's content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and show some love by giving this video a thumbs up. At the club Adam spots Billy and Sally kissing. Victor goes to look and dreams that is intriguing. Adam asks what is fascinating, the way that the clearly came from one of their suites or the way that they're clasping hands. Victor inquires as to whether he believes it's what it seems, by all accounts, to be. Adam's certain of it and condemnations Billy out. He's certain he's utilizing Sally to get back at him and calls him an all-out failure. Victor advises his child to pay attention to him. Billy Kid Abbott and Sally Spectra. That is a match made in damnation. He encourages his child not to allow them to see him blow up. They'll realize they've won. Adam brings the server over to send Billy and Sally a jug of champagne from him. Victor gestures, well that is nicely done. Esther shuts the cafe and tells Sharon she can do the sugar. Sharon says it quiets her. Esther muses, you would have zero desire to become really upset. She stammers on for a couple of moments and afterward apologizes. Sharon inquires as to whether she's alright. She's separated from everyone else in a room with a merciless killer. According to Esther, you're not cutthroat. Sharon tells her how sorry she for occurred. Esther feels the main explanation she could be at legitimate fault for this is on the grounds that she's extremely debilitated. Sharon says a many individuals would censure her for what she did, and they'd be correct. Esther contends she hasn't been herself for some time now. She reviews that Sharon hollered at her once, yet she assumes she was really shouting at her inconveniences. She trusts she can get the assistance that she wants. Sharon tells Esther she can return home. You've done what's necessary as of now. Esther leaves and Sharon locks the entryway and flips off the lights. Sitting she muses, assuming Esther saw what my identity was. Who I'm. Cameron shows up and says, she should think you are one debilitated doggy. Frankly, you better expectation the appointed authority and jury trust precisely the same thing. It's smarter to make puff holders in Fairview than to carry out a day-to-day -day existence punishment in the state pen. Cameron happens about the slop they serve in jail and says her skin will become dim. She advises him to stop. Cameron proceeds with that the miserable part is her family won't ever truly trust her from now onward. Sharon says they love her. Cameron needs her to confront the truth. She's the insane outsider who killed a mother. Ultimately, they'll quit visiting and she'll kick the bucket alone and neglected. Sharon says this isn't genuine. He isn't genuine. They're finished. Cameron inquires as to why she continues to get back to him. You hold me here. Why? Sharon expresses he's there so she can end this. I don't require you any longer. Farewell, Cameron. At the clinic, Scratch criticizes Phyllis for throwing Chance out. She'd much prefer converse with him. He says she looks great, alive and talking. She says thanks to him for saving her life. Scratch connects and grasps her hand. Scratch tells Phyllis that opportunity helped. He's happy they got to her in time. She asked how he came to be there. He says they heard the accident at the wedding and guarantees her it didn't wreck the pre-marriage ceremony. Phyllis states that she's alive in light of the fact that he strolled through fire for her. Scratch smiles, not exactly. He tells her it was frightening seeing the blazes and her caught inside. It took the two of us to get you out of that vehicle. Phyllis owes him her life. I will never under any circumstance fail to remember that. In the club lounge area, Adam looks as Billy and Sally talk. Billy lets Sally know that he trusts what happened higher up doesn't change the kinship they're building. Sally feels nearer to him now. The server accompanies the champagne from Mr. Newman, and Billy and Sally proclaim they will not be drinking it. Billy tips the server subsequent to advising him to try to charge them for it. Sally contemplates whether Billy will involve the container as a weapon. Billy's having a good time excessively and waves at Adam. Watching him make a respectable attempt not to allow his head to detonate is worth the effort. Sally believes that smidgen of vengeance they needed. They got it. 
At Adam's table, he tirades to his dad about Billy's father jokes as he hears Sally snicker. He needs to punch him. Victor cautions him not to go around there. Billy's not worth the effort. He asks him to commit his opportunity to Chelsea and Connor. Adam doesn't feel that is possible. Victor says Sally was just a redirection. She's a client. Adam will find the ideal lady and fall head over heels once more. Adam doesn't think he has a heart left. Victor demands it's not the end. He'll track down somebody. Adam stands up. Great evening, Pop. Billy and Sally watch him leave and Billy says they got under his skin. In the clinic, Scratch barbecues Phyllis about whether he saw Sharon in the other vehicle. Phyllis says she was messaging her and attempting to bait her to her home. Scratch inquires as to whether she's certain Sharon is the person who got it done. Phyllis is certain she was messaging her to come to her home. Scratch says that was not long before she admitted all that to opportunity. According to Phyllis, see, she presumably thought she'd killed her and that drove her past the brink into admitting to Heather's homicide. She could never have one more passing on her inner voice, or she assumed she had proof. Scratch surrenders that it seems okay, he's simply contemplating whether there's another clarification. Phyllis advises him to stop. She's admitted to killing Heather and she's in a medical clinic bed. Kindly don't let me know you are Sharon's ally. Phyllis gops, you're not exactly her ally, are you? All of a sudden, Michael shows up with a major grin and tells his companion it's great to see her retouching so rapidly. Phyllis asks Scratch to address her inquiry. He doesn't have a response and is simply happy she's all right. He leaves and Michael tells Phyllis she gave them every one of the a panic. Phyllis requests that he kindly clarify for her how he can protect the one who attempted to kill her. Michael says even the blameworthy merit portrayal in court. Phyllis reminds him he's her closest companion, yet not any longer. He's protecting the one who outlined her child and attempted to kill her. That yet he got her temporarily free from jail. Michael contends Sharon's not a danger to society. Phyllis tends to disagree. She killed the adoration for her child's life and attempted to approach him for homicide. My loved ones. What sort of companion is that? Michael's sorry she's so irate. This is the kind of person I'm. This is my specialty. I protect individuals in a difficult situation. He reminds her she was in a difficult situation and had somebody shield her. Phyllis killed a man justifiably. What is Sharon's reason? According to Michael, she might be intellectually crippled. At the club, Victor steers up to Billy and Sally and says, Wow. Out of grief comes heartfelt commitment. Billy cautions him to watch himself as the two of them attempt to dispose of him. Victor recommends she employ him at March at TZ, yet alerts her not to give him an excessive amount of force. Billy lets Victor know this isn't finished. Victor urges him to partake in the champagne. He has relatively little to praise nowadays. After he strolls off, Sally tells Billy she's grieved about that. Billy shrugs. Allow the elderly person to have a good time. Assuming he assumes he has the advantage, he won't see him coming. Then, at that point, he will have something to celebrate. At Ruby Lights, Cameron tells Sharon she really wants him like never before. Sharon counters that he turns everything, and presently Heather is dead. Cameron says decisions were made and some unacceptable individual passed on, she settled on those decisions. Sharon says she's more grounded and doesn't require him any longer. It's the ideal opportunity for him to go, for good. Until the end of time. She crushes her eyes shut and opens them. He's gone. A thump comes at the entryway. It's Adam. Sharon gives him access and brings up their shut. She says she was burning the midnight oil. He notes she was remaining solitary in obscurity. He's concerned. She's temporarily free from jail for homicide and should be a disaster area. She's shocked he's not staying away. Adam says they've experienced an excessive lot of together and he's in no situation to pass judgment. Sharon brings up he was a kid when he killed somebody. Adam says that when he recognized as a grown-up he was a wreck. Just a single individual connected with him. How might I help you? 
Scratch joins confidence and Maria at society. They can't help thinking about why he's late. He says he was with Phyllis at the medical clinic. She's conscious and pursuing Sharon much harder. This time it's not simply Heather. Phyllis is persuaded that Sharon needed her dead. Maria believes it's insane that Sharon attempted to run Phyllis off the street. Her power outage might not have had a say in the car crash. Scratch says she saw the flares and saw him and possibility yet didn't uncover herself. Confidence reviews how wrapped up her mom was about Phyllis. She said she planned to make her back off for the last time. Maria demands it's not Sharon. Scratch lets them know that Phyllis got a lot of texts from Sharon requesting that she meet her at the house to make an admission. Confidence asks when it worked out. Scratch says around 6 o'clock p.m. Confidence says she didn't have her telephone at that point. They were at the cafe and she'd left her telephone at home. Scratch states it could never have been her that messaged Phyllis. In the clinic, Phyllis lets Michael know that he can't safeguard Sharon. She really wants to go to prison for quite a while. Michael says she was definitely disapproving of her prescription. Phyllis can't hear that any longer. She's been going after her relatives for quite a long time. This all returns to Cassie's demise. She's never truly pardoned Daniel for it. This is all times of sharpness and hatred. She hurled something out of frustration at Heather and killed her. It's pre-reflected counter, not an insane break. Michael won't have this contention. Phyllis beseeches him not to take this case. Michael's heart breaks for her, however he will support his client actually surprisingly well. Phyllis doesn't figure their companionship can endure this. Michael adores her and nothing will change that, however he won't withdraw or be threatened into stopping. Please accept my apologies. In the club, Sally asks Billy what else. At Society, Scratch inquires as to whether it's conceivable that Sharon snuck off to message Phyllis. Confidence says there was no telephone and she appeared to be truly stressed over where she left it. Maria feels Phyllis might lie. Or on the other hand, confidence entirely misunderstands the course of events. If not, Sharon is lying and had her telephone and truly baited Phyllis to the farmhouse. At dark red lights, Sharon tells Adam it's sort of him to need to help her, yet she can't allow him to do that. Adam reminds her there's no dim street she's brought that he hasn't been down himself. Sharon calls attention to they haven't drawn out the best in one another all of the time. Adam says the other side is that they've likewise saved each other at least a time or two. Sharon thinks it best he doesn't reach out. This is the kind of thing I want to look all alone. Adam gestures. Great. Best of luck. However, I'm here in the event that you adjust your perspective. Once alone, Sharon gets a text from Scratch. He realizes it's late yet needs to talk tomorrow. In the emergency clinic, Phyllis lets Michael know that Sharon has the right to go to jail. My child and granddaughter merit equity. However, she's strolling the roads of Geno City. What are they going to do when they run into her? While he's praising himself in the wake of getting her a comfortable stretch at Fairview, what might be said about her loved ones? Where's the simple out for her child and Lucy? That's what you're doing. You're blocking them from the harmony that they need to give them equity. Oh my god you all yourself my companion. You are so brutal. Michael's sorry she feels as such. Phyllis had realized Sharon was blameworthy and perilous such a long time, yet you feel free to guard her. Michael says she has no verification. Phyllis sneers, you're not kidding. He ventures out to accept a call and Phyllis blazes to being diverted by texts from Sharon in the vehicle and to the mishap. She pants, no. Michael returns and inquires, what? She doesn't say anything. I'm fine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates.